In this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons why we should learn Vision OS development. But before that, let me share with you my story. So for my day job, I work as a mobile software engineer. I build mobile apps and I've worked as a freelancer. I've built my own apps too, which I've published to the app stores and I've made content on YouTube on spatial computing too. So I've been in the field for a while and one of the frustrating things that I found about the mobile space is of how constrained we are in terms of our creativity. And that brings me to the first reason why I think we should learn Vision OS development. I believe this field, spatial computing, is gonna give rise to a new breed of programmers and I like to call them the creative coders. Coding is already a creative field but not as creative as it can get. So far, we've been building in 2D, in screens, layouts, and buttons, and now we'll be designing and building and programming in 3D. AR is essentially digital content blended into the real world. And I can tell you, it's a really different experience building spatial computing apps. I'm building my own Vision OS app now, and I found something very peculiar about this experience. One week you're thinking, creating, and designing your own worlds, imagining them, and the next week you're coding them, writing the business logic, the data layer, and all that stuff, and then you cycle between both regularly. I believe we're gonna go back to the Da Vinci era, people like him, who are essentially polymaths. Da Vinci was an engineer, scientist, and artist all at the same time and products that come from those kind of skill sets are truly unique and powerful. So I believe learning Vision OS development, i.e. spatial computing, is really going to bring out the polymath in us more, which I believe is a good thing. So that's the first reason, to bring out the creativity in us more. Now the second reason why I believe we should learn Vision OS development is the unique distribution opportunity it brings. So anyone who has published anything online will know what I'm talking about. So I published apps to the app stores, I've got a course online, I've got a book too, and I make videos, right? So I know what I'm talking about. For anyone who has done the same, you would know that the hardest thing, the really the hardest, hardest thing is marketing. Yes, building the products itself is hard. The course, the apps, everything. It takes such a long time. But what's even harder, getting people interested in it and driving traffic to the product. But there's one unique advantage new platforms, especially when they go mainstream, brings. So it's a short window of time where supply is slow and demand's really high. So when supply is low and demand's really high, what happens is it becomes so much easier to drive traffic to it because people look for products. And a very good example is the AI boom that happened recently, right? You'll see in places like Twitter or anywhere that anyone who brings out AI products or mentions AI or makes content on AI have a lot of views and have a lot of traffic being driven to their products and they're making a lot of money. And I'm sure when it gets saturated, this is gonna level off. But right now it's a unique point in time where AI is going mainstream because of ChatGPT and people are realizing the value of it and there's a huge demand for it. But the supply is relatively low. At such a unique point in time where demand is high and supply is low, distribution and marketing becomes a lot easier. And you've seen it back in 2008 in the app era, right? When the app stores were first announced, apps that came out, no matter how bad they were, they got a lot of traffic easily simply because of the law of supply and demand again. Demand was going super high because a lot of people were buying iPhones and looking for those apps and the supply was low. So it became a lot more easier to market them and distribute them. A hardware without good content is nothing. So it's in their interest to drive more traffic and make the apps made by the indie developers more popular. So the basic point is this, whenever a new platform emerges, there's always a unique window of time, maybe a couple of years, maybe a couple of months, no one knows, but there's always that unique period in time where demand goes high and supply is low. So with Vision OS, I don't think that iPhone moment is there yet. Right now, the first version of the headset is already very expensive, and I doubt that it's gonna go mainstream very quickly. I think it might be Gen 2 and Gen 3 before it reaches that point, but that's precisely the reason why we should start learning Vision OS right now, because when that point comes, you wanna be ready for it, right? You wanna be ready to build and churn out products efficiently and bring your ideas to life and market them. So that's the second reason why we should learn Vision OS development. Now the third reason why we should learn Vision OS development is the unique innovation opportunity it brings. Now, I don't know about you, but I love to innovate, think of new ideas and bring them to life. It's one of the deepest joys of living. But one annoying thing that happens every single time is you think of a new idea, you get excited, you're in that mode thinking, how is this gonna change the world, etc. And you go to the app stores and you see it's already done. It's happened to me again and again and again, and I can't tell you how annoying it is, right? You just wish you were there earlier. And the reason is simple. The app stores have there been for 10 years it's a super saturated market. There are millions of apps in the app stores. 
and anything you think of is most likely been done already because everyone's jumped into this field already and it's been 10 years, it's matured and most things have been done already. Of course, there are still uninvented things in the app stores that people have not thought of, but my point is it's harder to find them now than before. If you jumped back to 2008, it would be so much easier because this paradigm was being invented and it would be easier to think about something and find out that it's not been taken already. But with spatial computing, the point is, this is a new dimension added to our digital lives, right? It's not a 2D screen anymore. Our digital lives is being spilled over into the real world. And what that means is the things, the application, the software, the experiences that we're going to use 10 years down the line, we're not even a point yet to imagine what they are. They are still yet to be invented and it's going to be entirely new paradigms, I believe. Just like when the smartphone first came out, no one thought that our attention span would get short as 66 seconds with apps like TikTok or no one thought about experiences like Instagram or Uber or Airbnb, all these stuff. No one imagined this would be possible because again, it was a completely new, different way of living when the smartphones first came out. It's the same thing with spatial computing. It's a new paradigm, a new experience. There'll be a lot of naysayers saying there's no applications for it, etc. And I believe they're really, really short-sighted. Those with a little bit of imagination can see at least the tip of the iceberg of the possibilities that this new technology brings. And what's beneath the iceberg, beneath the ocean, that's yet to be undiscovered. You'll have unique leverage if you get in early now, because again, if you gather the skill set and start building now, you will be in a better position to more fluidly and intuitively think of those ideas and bring them to life. And the market and the world and people and humanity always rewards innovation. Innovation is not only rewarded by the public, but it's also deeply, inherently a very fulfilling thing to do. The earlier you get in, the more chances you have to innovate. So that's the third reason, the unique innovation opportunity that this technology brings. Now, so far, we've talked about building products, putting it out into the stores, etc. right? Let's be honest, it's a risky thing, right? Risky in terms of your time investment or your money investment. There's no guarantee that it would succeed. Because let's be real, there is always a chance of that happening. I'm not saying that because it's a new field, every single app is guaranteed to be a success. It obviously needs to be of value and executed well. I believe all those short-term hacks, those are not going to last. Only things of value really lost in the long term. That always holds true if you want to survive the long game. So let's say in terms of you investing your time, you put in all this effort and learning, you build out and put stuff on the app stores and it failed. What's the worst case that could happen, right? Now, my point is the worst case scenario, even if you fail, you'll end up in a much better place than where you are today. And this brings me to the third reason why I think we should learn vision OS development, because the worst case is that you will end up with a skill that will have such a high premium in the market. I'm talking about vision OS developers. In the near term, the companies are going to first come in and start building apps for this device, especially I think the enterprise uh, market would adopt this device first due to its premium price. And not only that, the companies in general targeting consumers would also start building apps for it in preparation for the future. So my point is in the near to midterm future, when these companies start building apps for it, they would need to hire talent, right? And those talent are going to be rare. There are going to be a lot of software engineers or iOS developers and etc. But software engineers with Vision OS specialization would be a unique breed because of the laws of supply and demand. When supply of talent is low and demand for it would be high, demand in this case from the company's hiring talent, the salaries would be higher. And if you don't believe me, again, look at what's happening with the AI boom right now. AI engineers from OpenAI are being paid like $800,000 a year, some even more than a million. Same thing with other companies. They're willing to pay really, really large amounts for AI engineers simply because it's so hard to find AI engineers right now. The field has just gone mainstream and that means demand is high and supply is low for talent. Soon, I believe that's gonna level out. There's gonna be more AI engineers in the field. People are rushing towards that area now. Those who got in early reap the largest rewards because again, how the loss of supply and demand works. If you get in early, you always win. So the worst case that could happen is that you'll land up with a skill set for which you could charge a high premium in the near future. So you're really not gonna lose that much. Now let's even go a step further and assume the worst worst case, right? And the worst worst case is the spatial computing itself. The Vision Pro becomes a flop. Again, I think that's unlikely to happen, but let's assume that happens. Skills you would have acquired to learn Vision OS development are learning Swift, Swift programming language, Swift UI, learning native iOS frameworks, using the Xcode ID, the intricacies of iOS development. Basically, my point is you need to learn iOS development, the native side, to really build good Vision OS apps. You can't skip that step. 
Which means if you learn Vision OS development, you automatically get the skill sets needed for an iOS developer. And iOS development is already a high paid field today, right now, as it is. So the worst, worst case is you land up with the skills of an iOS developer. So even if the field flops, everything goes bust. I don't think you lose much. The worst case is already good. So those are the five reasons why I believe we should learn vision of development. I've been in this field for a while and I've got a website. And if you want to learn from my learnings, I've got books there, courses there, some paid, some free, which you can all use to fast track and get your journey started to this era. So if you're interested, go check out www.realityuni.com and I'll add the link in the description. I wish you all the best and I hope you get started with your journey and hope to see something from you soon.